What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Robot Panda here, bringing you another YouTube video today, talking about Battlefield 1, and this is going to be the first video I will do on it, talking about the classes, and right now, the classes seem fairly balanced, quote-unquote. Um, you got the Assault Kit, which does really good at its PDW, SMGs t sort of ranges. You got the Medic Kit, which functions as sort of a medium medium range role, and I, I know once people get used to those Medic guns they'll excel with them, and those medic guns are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you got the um, support class, of course, with the new LMG change being that the longer you hold down the trigger, the more accurate they get. Uh, it actually works out really well because these LMGs are going to be really nice to use at range, and they actually do function pretty decently in close quarters as well. Some of them are pretty heavy hitting for that. Uh, the scout kit, of course, is going to get way more updated it's going to get used a lot more because of the fact that there aren't any assault rifles that fill that gap in between pdws and dmrs you just have your straight up medic rifles which do lose accuracy at range really badly and their damage at range isn't too good i wish they would buff that just a little bit the ac the accuracy penalty and the bullet deviation is just a bit too hampering because you can spam those things pretty fast and i think i, I feel like you should reward players that have a fast trigger finger with with that accuracy that you should have with those kind of rifles but uh one question or one uh, thing I don't like though is how the assault kit starts off you start off with dynamite and anti-tank grenades and those are two very close range kind of anti-tank weapons so it's kind of redundant to have both of them but then again tanks in this game take a lot of take a lot to uh, be able to destroy you need to really really do a number to them you have to dogpile tanks, basically, especially the land sh the land ship and the heavy tank. You need to dogpile those in order to kill them. The light tank you can probably take down by yourself, but uh, I really feel like a better balance would be starting the uh, assault kit off with the um, AT, the anti tank rocket gun, as well as either dynamite or the anti or the anti tank grenade. Uh, simply because then you have the long range capability of it. And that's kind of what the anti-tank infantry is meant for. They're meant for staving off armor. They're meant for bullying away armor. They're not meant to really kill it. They're more meant to say, Hey, get the hell out of here. That kind of stuff. So I really wish they also, uh, the anti-tank grenade, I really wish they would buff up the damage of that a little bit to maybe 30 or 40, 40 sounds like quite a lot, but trust me, it's hard to get off both those anti-tank grenades, especially if that heavy tank or land ship has a full tank crew, because running at those things and trying to throw those grenades is not very effective. So that's kind of one of the changes I would like to see to the assault kit. For the medic kit, I already talked about it a little bit. There needs to be a little bit of a better balance for the semi-automatic rifles. They need better accuracy and damage at range. Um, not too far, but enough to the point where they will absolutely dominate over a uh, SMG over over one of the fully automatic submachine guns that the assault uh, players carry and it also with really well placed shots should also be able to take out LMG users at longer ranges even when suppressed so having more accuracy and damage at range would really help those guys out support I feel is perfect but they really need to see I really need there to be more of an incentive to play support. Of course, Assault's really going to really gonna use the support guy, but I don't see enough players, on PS4 at least, playing the Assault kit to really warrant the need of a support kit to back them up with ammo. Uh, once we get into the full game and people understand what they're doing, we get less of the newer people in and more, and more of the people that kind of understand how Battlefield works, 
then it's going to change the meta up a little bit and we might see the support used a little bit more. But right now there's not really much of an incentive to use the support class aside from the LMGs. And of course the recon kit, I love what they're doing with the recon kit. Um, or the scout kit, I guess is what it's called in Battlefield 1. It feels great. Seeing seeing all these bolt actions, seeing high-powered weapons, making people afraid of going out in the open. That is what the scout kit is meant for. It is meant to absolutely punish people that try to move, that try to maneuver in the open. They try to move out of cover. There's going to be a sniper rifle trained on them and it's going to down them or it's going to either kill them or it's going to drop their health to one shot range. That's what those scout kits are meant for. And I'm really glad that they are being as big as they are in the game currently. Um, aside from that, I really like the game right now. I, there's some smaller like user interface and bugs that are currently in the game, but hopefully those will be thinned out or polished by the time the game releases. So far, it's looking okay. Uh, people have been having a lot of issues joining the servers. That's something that I think Dice... I haven't been having as many issues lately, but you know, some people have been having a lot of issues. I know they got DDoSed. From what I heard, they got DDoSed. But yeah, that should all be pretty good. And it should all be um, fixed by the time the game launches. And if it's not, what the hell is Dice Stockholm doing? Uh, but yeah, so f so far my favorite guns have to be the... Uh, there's the medic kit. I really like the Seal Rigatti artillery. And also like uh, the... Not the Mondragon. There's the other one that's kind of the higher powered... And it's not the and it's not the nineteen six I think it's the nineteen sixteen sharpshooter one of those except I like the artillery version of that better because it's got the more closer ranged optic. Those are two of my favorite guns right now. I really like the Automatico light infantry, uh, the support kit I haven't really messed around too much with, and the scout kit. Uh, the SMLE is probably one of my favorite guns right now. It's probably one of my favorite sniper rifles to use. Really good damage at range. So those are kind of the weapons I like. Um. Another issue I'm seeing with medics is that they aren't really reviving as often. This could be because of the new revive mechanic where you actually have to request a medic. Um, it's kind of stupid how they did it. You request a medic or you can press and hold X to get to the deploy screen faster. Now, it doesn't actually deploy you faster. It doesn't mean that once you get to the deploy screen, you can hit X on the next objective and go to that. No, it just means you're going to be sitting there waiting at the deploy screen longer. So... I advise a lot of people hit that R1 button and just wait out the timer. If the medic picks you up, they'll pick you up. If they don't, they don't. But one thing they need to do is so when you do get when you do go down, uh, you have you hit R1 and it kind of shows you or you hit your uh, request medic key and it shows you how close the near, nearest medics are. What they need to do is for those medics, they need to show them on the bottom right how close those dead players are that they need to revive. And then the closer they get to them, uh then it changes to the actual icon, the triage icon on their body. That would be a significant change to see people revive more. I know a lot of people are against revives in Battlefield. Uh, a couple of my friends are some of those guys as well. But I, for one, love the revive system, mostly because I'm a rush player. Uh, the assault kit, like I said earlier, the redundancy of the dynamite and AT grenade at the beginning... I feel like they need a long-range alternative, so hopefully DICE can do some research and figure out if there's another... Another less impacting um, anti-tank launcher they could put in the game for long-range anti-tank use. <clears throat> that would be very, very nice to have. Uh, and support kit, I just want to see a lot more weapon variety out of the support kit. I really do. Uh, the guns I saw so far, I wasn't really impressed by. The Lewis gun's nice and all, but you do have to deal with the overheating if you hold down the trigger too long. I do love the fact that they get more accurate the longer you hold down the trigger. That's really cool. But right now, I would love to see some other, some other more refined changes to them. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about like I'm going to be talking about the vehicles in the game. Right now, I'm having a little bit of an issue with um, my ed my editing software not wanting to actually process the video onto it, so I can edit the videos for some reason. I don't know what's going on there, but we'll have that going. But uh, I also have another video coming out as well about YouTube's current copyright 
or not copyright YouTube's current um, terms of service changes that a lot of people are making a lot of fuss about and I highly agree with most of these people so expect those coming up shortly around the same time this video goes up um, I'm gonna be try I'm gonna stream Battlefield 1 on Sunday on YouTube actually I'm not gonna stream it on Twitch I'll try to stream it on YouTube this time see if I can get some more viewers in there but uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, subscribe for more content, and leave comments. I want to see all the comments I possibly can, because I will read them all. Either way, Panda, check in out.